Lance Stevenson Jr., born September 5th, 1990. Ah, Lance Stevenson. Isn't that the first thing you think about when his name is brought up? I gotta give it to him. He, in my opinion, is the most entertaining basketball player outside of J.R. Smith that I've seen since he entered the league. His basketball career has been a roller coaster ride, literally, beginning in high school, where he was one of the best prospects in the country. A lot is expected from a New York player, and a lot of it has to do with the bravado they carry and the ability to talk themselves up and make what they do bigger than history shows it's been. At one point, along with guys like OJ Mayo, was expected to be the next Kobe and LeBron. He was that good and that hyped in high school. No one envisioned he would slip to the second round and never really find a groove in the NBA, leading to him becoming a journeyman. What happened? Salute to EJ, classy cuts on IG for this request. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Snow Growth. Ash, get it, man. Lance Stevenson is a 6'6", 230-pound small forward slash shooting guard from Brooklyn, New York, and was a phenom since 12 years old. He's the youngest player to be invited to the famed ABCD camp, which hosted the top players of any class to hoop under one roof. He was a standout at the camp before he was even a high school student and even challenged then number one prospect OJ Mayo to a one-on-one. -on -one. Stevenson has always had a quirky personality that while he was boasting and challenging you, you loved him for how humorous it came off. No one ever hates Lance Stevenson, a former coach said. By the end of his senior season, he was a four-time public school league champion, back-to-back -back state player of the year winner, being beat out by a guy named Durant Scott, became the all-time leader in points passing Sebastian Telfair for the state of New York, which is huge considering it's the Mecca, right? Also a McDonald's All-American invite where he scored 12 points, 6 assists, and 3 steals. By now, everyone was waiting for Stevenson to make a decision on his college choice, but in typical Stevenson fashion, he missed the signing deadline and had to sign up for financial aid at his choice Cincinnati instead of receiving a full athletic scholarship. Stunt number one. I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl who looked good I would call her, I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six form parlor. Hey salute to one of the best hip hop storytelling songs and videos of all time man. But in Stevenson's case, if he was a little bit taller, I think his career could have played out a lot different. Keep in mind, Lance is six foot six, and that's nowhere short as even an NBA player. But when you start to look at game style, you notice that those few small inches can make a huge difference. Like mentioned, Stevenson was a phenom basketball player earlier than most and started to get comparisons to some of the best small forwards, most notably LeBron James. Many saw him achieving those heights and he was well on his way throughout his high school career. This made him develop skills to match his projected position. In basketball, there's slight differences in those positions that make them very different in comparison. A shooting guard can basically do everything a point guard can do, but may be a little bigger, has natural inclination to score first, can defend, and athletic enough to run the wing on breaks, but may not be as good ball handlers or leaders. A small forward has a more methodical game because they're usually bigger and not as fast as ones and twos, but can post up on the wing and sometimes on the block. They're big enough to rebound and receive more contact, but small enough to get in the paint and create for others if need be. Keep in mind, this is in an era before positionless basketball were a thing. These similar but defined positions lead you to work on your game in a way that you will be well suited for it one day. You develop all the moves for the position while not focusing on the ones you don't think you'll need, 
And that's what I think was the first growth stunt for Lance Stevenson. He molded his game as if he would grow to be 6'8 like LeBron James, and because he was bigger than his level of competition, he never saw himself not reaching that height, so wasn't suited stylistically to what his eventual position of dominance should have been at his size, which is an NBA shooting guard. Yes, he could post up, get his shot off, handle, and dominate the boards in high school, but when the levels got higher, his lack of elite shooting, IQ for a handler's position, and foot speed began to show. At the NBA level, he didn't shoot well enough from deep at over 20% just twice in his first five seasons, nor from the foul line at 68% for his career to succeed at the two, and didn't rebound or defend well enough for the small forward position. Stunt number two, leaving too soon. Lance's struggles with those things began all the way back to his lone season at Cincinnati. He shot 22% from three, 66% from the foul line, averaged five rebounds a game, and 12 points on the season. Also, a one-to-one -one assist to turnover ratio. A lot of his misfires came because in college he attempted to continue to play on the ball as a hybrid point forward, but with bigger, more skilled players, it wasn't so easy to get those passes and moves off. At that level, the IQ is a lot higher than the New York high school basketball scene where your name allows you to dribble all day and excite the crowd, then launch an all-red, contested, deep Niagara Falls 3 with 10 seconds left on the clock. When he did play off the ball, he noticed that he couldn't post these players as easily nor finish at the rim like before. All of this should have been considered before he decided to leave early and not adjust his game a bit more to be better prepared. But when you've had the hype he had and expectations to be the next in line, you almost have to leave as soon as you're allowed. Anyone else with these college stats at a school that weren't expected to compete for a national championship would have easily went undrafted. Fortunately and unfortunately for Lance, he had built up enough cachet to still be taken, but with the 40th pick toward the end of the second round by the Indiana Pacers. A far cry from where many saw him landing, and it had a lot to do with him not proving he could dominate at a school like Cincinnati before leaving early. Stunt number three, antics. Like J.R. Smith, Stevenson may arguably be a better entertainer than basketball player. Turn on the camera and be sure to see a show. There may be some bad shots, over celebration, misreads, and IQ problems mixed in there, but you will get your money's worth in some way. The thing about that is, it's short lived. The only thing that matters is what you do on paper, and for Stevenson, outside of his Indiana days, he had more shows than production. Many teams will pass on the chance to sign or trade for you when your personality is so full of antics that it may not fit what the team is trying to display if your production doesn't match. In his first few seasons with the Pacers, he struggled to find his footing but started to put it all together in 2013-14, his contract year. He averaged 14 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists that year and was beginning to carve out a pretty interesting lane for himself as a do-it-all third option that could even make an all-star one day and develop into a nice second option. For a 40th pick, that's awesome. For Lance, who viewed himself and his career having a lot more potential, he decided to decline a five-year, $44 million contract from Indiana because he believed he could garner a lot more as a free agent. The market didn't agree, and he wound up taking a three-year, $27 million deal with the Charlotte Hornets, which was a horrible fit for him, and began his official NBA journey after just one season. Stunt number four, and the very first in stunted growth history. You have to be a special player to garner that type of honor. Pace yourself. Him leaving Indiana in itself was easily a fourth growth stunt. That team and its organization believed in Lance, and he was already comfortable and making a name for himself. 
Paul George would go down that very off season with a season ending leg injury right after Lance left the team, which could have been an open lane for him to finally have a lead player and number one option type role, being the best player healthy enough to play on the roster. Stevenson began to become known for his humorous antics, mostly against his idol and father figure LeBron James, who always trollingly got the best of him, even though Stevenson was actually trying to be the troll. He began to get traded and signed, traded and signed on one or half year stays until he ended up with his idol and big brother that refused to claim him in LeBron and the Lakers. He spent a year with the team, and after they missed the playoffs, he signed with the CBA in 2019, where he helped his team to a championship and won an MVP. All in all, I like Lance Stevenson, and I enjoyed his journey in basketball. To a fault, he never took himself too seriously and was able to play a nice amount of time in the NBA. Leaving at just 28 years old though, I can't help but wonder what could have been had these things not happened. Salute to him, much, much respect. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Also, visit StunnedGrowth3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrowth3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it. Bring back the man in you, not because you need to, but because you will want to. Improve your weight room and bedroom performance with the all new Vasoflux for Men Natural Dietary Supplement. This unique blend of barks, roots, herbs, and vitamins is nature's way of keeping you in the game. And all for under $10. You can order yours today. Visit U Fountain Laboratory at ufountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856 today.